Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about Plan B. Plan B is emergency contraception with levonorgestrel. Levonorgestrel is a type of female hormone. It's a progestin. It's present in a significant number of birth control pills at a lower dose, of course. When it's a higher dose, it's a morning after pill. It can prevent pregnancy after unprotected sex or after known or suspected failure of your routine method of contraception. It can be taken at any time during the course of your cycle. It can be taken for women who are not taking a birth control pill. The condom came off, the diaphragm slipped out of place, you missed two or more of your birth control pills, you forgot to insert the ring or didn't apply the patch, or the partner didn't pull out in time, or you were forced to have sex. Levonorgestrel is present at a dose of one and a half milligrams. When it was originally marketed, it was marketed as a 0 0.75 milligrams, half the dose, and you had to take two pills. One pill initially, the other pill at 12 hours. Well, as of 1993, the Food and Drug Administration said, no, the dose could be 1.5 milligrams, and it was approved as emergency contraception in 1999 at the current dose. It was available by 2006 without the need for a prescription for women who were at least age 18, and by 2013, it was available without prescription for women of any age. Now, although the method is a type of contraception, it's not your routine method of birth control. It's only a backup. You should only use it as a backup. It's called the morning after pill, but you don't have to take it the morning after. You could take it right at the time. As soon as you take it, as close as possible to that sexual event, it seems to work best. It's marketed by a variety of different drug houses, so one calls the, their product Plan B One Step, another one is My Way or Next Choice One Dose or Take Action or After Pill, variety of different names. All of them contain one and a half milligrams of levonorgestrel. The pill doesn't cause miscarriages, doesn't cause abortions, it doesn't stop the development of the fertilized egg once it's implanted in the womb, it doesn't work on women who are already pregnant, and it's not going to harm the fetus if one already is there. It doesn't affect the endometrium, and it seems that it doesn't cause ectopic pregnancy doesn't protect you against sexually transmitted infections, and of course it goes without saying, you take the pill after the event, not in preparation for the event. So for emergency contraception, we have two major pills available. We have the levonorgestrel, and then we have another pill called Ella or Ulipristal acetate. These are not the same as the Mifeprex, Mifeprex or RU486, also known as the abortion pill. The Centers for Disease Control has said the pills have gotten so popular that about 10% of women overall in the United States have taken an emergency method of contraception, had used one of these pills. And if we look specifically at those women having sex between the ages of 15 and 44, about one woman in four has taken emergency contraception, and that has significantly increased from about 4% in 2002 to 18% in 2006 to 1 in 4 at the present time. And if we look at women of different ages, we find women between the ages of 15 and 24, well, about 1 in 3 has used emergency contraception. 1 in 2 in women between the ages of 25 and 34, and women over age 35, still 1 in 10 has used emergency contraception. So very widely used. And it seems to be used equally frequently among Caucasians, African Americans, and Hispanics. It's important that we have the medicine available since about 50% of pregnancies in the United States are unplanned. Now, taking the pill might be associated with some side effects, most common of which is nausea in up to 50% of women, but more importantly, vomiting in up to 20% of women. Now, if you vomit within two hours of taking the pill, there will not be a sufficient amount absorbed to perform the appropriate task. So you might have to take a second pill. Other side effects include fatigue or headache or dizziness or some breast tenderness. Might affect their next period. Well, it can make it either heavier or lighter. It can make it earlier or later. But 
if you haven't had a period within three weeks of taking the pill, you need to have a pregnancy test. Now, what it does to your next menstrual cycle, next period, really depends on when in the cycle you're taking it. So if you take the pill before you ovulate, you're going to have withdrawal bleeding within seven days. If, on the other hand, you take it in the second part after you've ovulated, then chances are your next period is going to be delayed somewhat. The pill works best if you take it within 72 hours of that sexual event. Works between 85 and 90 percent of the time, but if you can take the pill within 24 hours, it works about 95 percent of the time. Now, some people dawdle a bit and take it even after the 72 hours. It seems to work up to about five days, but it doesn't work very well in that time period. So you really need to take it as soon as possible and hopefully within 24 hours. Now, you shouldn't take it if you've already taken Ella since the time of your last period. And there's an issue about obesity. If the woman weighs more than about 165 pounds, there is some evidence that the levonorgestrel containing emergency contraceptive pills won't work very well. And certainly if the woman weighs more than 175 pounds, eh, there's some issues. Now the Food and Drug Administration says the issues don't exist, but the medical doctors in the report say that there really is an issue and a better choice for these women might be maybe the copper IUD or the pill that we talked about, Ella. But even the Ella doesn't work in women who weigh more than a body mass index of 35. Now, it's preferable to take the levonorgestrel, the morning after pill, rather than, say, doubling up on some of the contraceptives you might have at home, because that might lead to an increased incidence of stroke or blood clots or migraine headaches, but if you take the levonorgestrel, there are no medical contraindications. So you can take it even if you have deep vein thrombosis or a blood clot at the present time, if you have breast cancer at the present time, if you have inflammatory bowel disease or autoimmune disease, there are no specific contraindications. However, you should make certain that the risks are less than the benefits. Now, if you're taking the pill, if you do plan to take the pill, you have to realize that its metabolism is going to be altered if you're taking certain other kind of medicines. So the levonorgestrel is going to be more rapidly metabolized if you're taking St. John's Wort or Topamax, or if you're taking Tegretol or Dilantin, Phenytoin, or Rifampin, or even some of the AIDS-related drugs. Well, the good news about the levonorgestrel is it has a very high progestational effect. Obviously, it's a progestational agent. But some of the progestational agents actually have some androgenic or some male-like hormone activity. Mm, that isn't the case. This is a very weak androgen. doesn't have any estrogenic effects. Now, how does it work? Well, it works depending on when in the cycle you take it. So if you take it more than two days before the LH surge that tells the ovary to release the egg, there's no LH surge and the ovary doesn't release the egg. If you take it after the LH surge, which is mid-cycle, then it's going to interfere with fertilization of the egg. No harm if you happen to be pregnant at the time and don't know it. If you're a woman and you're breastfeeding, it might decrease the milk just a little bit, but probably not a significant amount. If you happen to be Chinese or of Chinese ancestry, the pill might not work nearly as well as it does in women who aren't Chinese. Once you take the pill, you're going to have maximum concentration within the bloodstream within about one and a half to two hours. It's not studied taking it with food. Probably ought to take it on an empty stomach. The half-life, the amount of time it spends in the system, the half-life is going to be about 27 hours, a little more than a day. It's going to float around complex to the plasma proteins, and it's going to vary in its metabolism depending on your particular system, but most of it is going out either in the urine or in the feces. Now, if a woman has sex just at random during the course of her cycle, she has about an 8% chance of becoming pregnant. On the other hand, if she takes the levonorgestrel, the pill that we're talking about, that rate falls down to about 1%. Now, there are other options available in women for emergency contraception. We know that there are 11 brands currently of the levonorgestrel. 
That works within the 72-hour time period, decreases the pregnancy rate somewhere around 80 to 90 percent, even more if you take it sooner. There's Ella that's an anti-progestin. It works within 120 hours. The failure rate is about 2 percent. Mifepristone is used, that's the anti-abortion, or the abortion pill rather. That's used in some countries. It's used very frequently in China. It's used for up to 120 hours after that sexual event at a mid-dose, 10 milligrams or 25 milligrams. Some women combine up on birth control pills they already have at home as long as they're combined contraceptives. So they contain the estrogen and the progestin, said to work for up to 120 hours. The likelihood of effect is about 75%. In the past, it was sold as a dedicated pill that was just used for the purpose, but it doesn't have any benefit over the currently available birth control pills. And if you happen to be taking the combined contraceptive that you take regularly without the need for having a period, something like Seasonal or Seasonique uh, or Libro, then those are quite acceptable. And the Food and Drug Administration gave off-label consent to use these medicines for the purpose in 1997. Actually, there are about 24 different brands of oral contraceptive that can function this way. There's a doctor's name attached to it from the 1970s, Dr. Yutzby. You could use the Copper 7 IUD if it's inserted within 120 hours. That is also effective. It's probably 99% effective. And once it's inserted, it works for about 12 years. The progestin-type IUDs, like the Mirena, not effective for the purpose. Well, you ought to have, if your circumstances suggest the possible need. You ought to have a supply at home so that you can take it as soon as possible after your sexual event. Now there's a question about whether having these medicines available would lead to a rise in the incidence of having unplanned sex and maybe you would have to use the medicines more frequently. And in other countries where this has been studied, like France and Sweden and Britain and Scotland, it doesn't seem that it has any effect. So how much does it cost? Well, if you're paying cash, you can buy the pill for anywhere between 30 and $60. And oftentimes it can be covered by a prescription, a prescription that the pharmacist can write right there without having to see a doctor. So it's over the counter, no prescription is needed, no proof of age. In some colleges it's present in vending machines. You can get it Planned Parenthood or family planning clinics, you get it at the health department, certainly you can buy it over the internet or in drug stores. But if you go into the pharmacy, it's oftentimes behind the counter because of shoplifting. Sometimes it's in a lockbox, sometimes you have to ask the pharmacist, sometimes you have to ask the person at the checkout counter. And interestingly, it's available for both men and women. Now, some hospitals when they examine women who are taken there because of sexual assault, don't offer this kind of medication. Well, they should, and you should be aware of it. And as a matter of fact, the access has been endorsed by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American Medical Association, the American Public Health Association, so emergency contraception. It's readily available, it's multiple forms. You can buy Plan B or a variety of other forms. You don't need a prescription and you shouldn't rely on this kind of a medicine for your routine contraception, but it should be around just in case. So anyway, be careful. Thanks for watching, I'm Dr. Ken Landau.